Hello, we are going to talk about population in economic development. Here is a list of countries with a large population. The most populous country in the world is China, as we will know, with a billion and 368 million people as of 2015, followed by India with 1 billion 267 million dollars million people and of course India is catching up with uh, uh, China uh, uh, rapidly. Third, United States, fourth Indonesia and then fifth uh, Brazil with uh, a little bit more than 200 million people. Then Pakistan, Nigeria, Bangladesh and then Russia with 146 million. Um, I saw called the, these four countries, China, India, Brazil, Russia, uh, as they uh, comprise the so-called uh, BRICS, uh, BRIC nations, uh, with uh, uh, kind of a global presence, partly because of this large population, with the uh, large land area uh, with resources. The, with respect to the population changes in the economic development, uh, let's see this uh, demographic transition model which has been around for some time in the demography field, which goes as follows. In the initial phase of uh, uh, population changes actually before the uh, rapid economic development economy is in this high stationary period which means there are high rates of uh, birth and death. Birth rate and death rates are both high cancelling each other with no population growth. But after uh, economy uh, uh, you know, starts the uh, development process the death rate started to de decline sharply because of the uh, improvements in the medicine and the healthcare and so on, whereas the birth rate tends to stay high in the rural areas. That is called the early expanding period because this difference between birth rate and death rate is the natural population growth rate. So population started to grow or rather rapidly in the early expanding period. And then, then uh, late expanding period will start when the birth rates uh, begins to fall along with death rate. Then this difference will become narrower and narrower, meaning the, the natural population growth rate is going down, so the population increase will be gradually decelerating in the late expanding period. And then in this fourth stage, which is called the mature stationary period or low or stationary period, both birth rate and death rates will stay low, cancelling each other with no population growth. Many of the uh, advanced countries are in this period with very little you know, population increase. But in the fifth stage, the, some countries at least, will experience the decline, further decline in the population uh, birth rate so that this difference will become negative uh, between birth rate and death rate so that is, uh, means the natural decline, population decline. Uh, you know, some countries like Japan is experiencing that kind of phase that is called the declining period. Uh, let's look at some examples and the natural comparison to make is, of course, India and China. Uh, here is the population changes over time in China, here is India. We, as of today, say 2015, China's population is a little bit above India's population. It's been like this for some time. But, uh, because of the uh, aging trend and all, partly due to the one-child policy in China, 
uh, population in China will soon hit the peak around 2030 and beyond that uh, China will, ex will go into this uh, declining period where our population will start going down. While India will, India's population will keep on growing until 2050. So India will still be in the late expanding period beyond 2030. So India will surpass China in terms of total population after uh, 2028 or 2030. Uh, so, th so these are the comparisons which we are carefully uh, you know, looking at and examining the implications. Here is the uh, debatable point. Which is better? More population or less population? Well, not so many population, not so many people. Side A. The more population, the better. For economic development, because that will mean more labor force, and the uh, greater GDP, total GDP, and of course global presence to come with it uh, as we saw the, as we see the, the case of BRICS. And the increase in population in some of the European economies may well cancel out or the offset the decrease in some of the uh, advanced uh, economies. Uh, in terms of total population. So that's good. That's the side A's argument. In contrast, side B says, no, too many people will hurt the economy. Too much population is no good because that would yield less per capita income. You see the income divided by population. So too many people will reduce that number. With more poverty, more pollution result, hurting the economy locally as well as globally. So that's the other. Which position to take is up to you.